There we go. Okay. All good. Um, start presenting. This is doing nothing. Yeah, it, nothing changes on my side. Okay, that's fine. Um, okay, sweet. So, congrats on winning. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate um, that. Yeah, no, this is dope, man. Like, this is so cool. Um, yeah, I've just been, I've been looking at it when you, since you've been, <laughs> like, delayed, it's just delayed, but no, it's looking, it's really cool. A lot of cool details. I think, like, a lot of, um, like, this kind of stuff here, a lot of this could be pushed further, I think. Yeah, I agree. Like, we, like it could be just a bit more intense, because only reason why I say that is because if you were to put like subsurface on this, like for skin, um, any sort of shading work on this, it would completely disappear. So most of the time you need to like actually make these kinds of wrinkles super deep, a lot deeper than you think. Um, All right. Yeah. But otherwise, it's like really cool. I would just go in and like, there's a, a ZBrush brush um, in 20, uh, 2021 the newest update i think that's mm -hmm. it's like a contrast brush and you can just go over all this stuff and it'll just contrast everything that you've done and it'll make everything like deeper so okay it's just like a really quick way to actually add the the uh, emphasis on some of the stuff yep. Is that okay okay i i uh, i was using a 2020 version so i i didn't know about this brush so okay Contrast brush. Let me see if I can actually open it and see if I can show you. Um, gosh, I feel like opening my programs today is just so slow. <laughs> Hello, brush. It's been on vacation too, clearly. <laughs> yes. Um, all right. Okay. I know. I think it's the contrast delta and contrast yes, target. Yes, there's target and delta. Yeah, so these ones basically, I think if you just like do anything, you go over it with the delta, it's just going to emphasize everything you just did. Hmm. Cool. Yeah, it does its best. Clearly, it's like kind of bulging other things out, but it's a cool brush to do uh, that kind of stuff with. Um, the other thing I noticed was all the wrinkles right here have a lot of really good intention and uh, pulling, like these ones. But the ones that, let me just turn it to blue, these ones here. I feel like they would probably be a bit more smooth if it's like a leather material. Like it would probably be a bit more flat. And then we would have this one wrinkle here. So maybe this this section right here is probably just a bit too much. But I really like all of these wrinkles. But I mean I think it's just it's just a specific little thing. Um and then same with this strap, I think. Is it supposed to be metal or leather? Uh, it's 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 more of a leather thing. Okay. At least, yeah, at okay. least it looks like it. It is like angled and stuff. I think in this situation, like when you're working on concepts, um, at some point you have to break from the concept, especially if you're doing something so realistic, that this is more like a stylized strap that would be kind mm -hmm. of like angled and stuff. So I think like at the point where it hits these like little um, bolts or pins or whatever they are, I think at this point is where we could have smoothed it out and kind of, because right now it's just sitting at a very weird um, jaggedy edge. It just feels unnatural. So I think it could have fallen a little bit more um, flat, I guess. His belly button looks dope. This is amazing. <laughs> um, dope. Um, like his feet could have also gotten some more love, like yeah. like the the little knuckles and like all that stuff. 
yeah, the, the feet in their hands were done like the last day yeah, yeah so. i mean i know it's when you don't have enough time but again i'll just give you the notes and <laughs> just the review you know and sure yeah i mean because some of the stuff i'm sure you probably like oh i wish i had the time to fix this and that's okay yeah, the... we never do <laughs> Did you do this in ZBrush, like the hard surface stuff? Uh, this one, yes. With a lot of um, well, the clay polish, you know, and then uh, just uh, zero meshing and uh, extracting, just stuff like that. Really cool. But most, uh, most of the hard surface, like the shield, the sword, I just did in Maya because it was easier and not mm -hmm. so good at the hard surface modeling in ZBrush. Oh, me neither. I suck at it. That's why I was asking. I was like, this looks pretty cool. Good job. Um, yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, I got nothing to say about the hard surface. Nailed it. All good. Um, we might have like a little bit of crispy edges on some of the stuff. Like um, one thing you could do is just do like a little bit of a softer bevel. Because as much as things look like they have a hard edge when it's from far away you get like a crazy like anti-alias like sharpness happening um so it's it's good to give it like a little bit of a softer edge yeah, okay uh, these are cool oh my goodness it's like can i zoom <laughs> <laughs> yes you can zoom button can I see? Oh, oh my gosh. Is this like a, a bow tie? Uh, I, it's, yeah, something like this. I made it, uh, yeah, just a, a small piece uh, to have some detail. Nice. Yeah. Good call. Yeah, it's looking cool. Um, I think this maybe got a bit wobbly. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sick. Um, but yeah, maybe like the uh, like this section here too. It might just be a bit too wobbly. It'd be cool if it was like straighter. Um, I saw like I I see the leathered kind of wobbling you're trying to go for though so like it's cool i think it just might be a bit too intense yeah uh, i mean i didn't really do a, a material study I, I i should i should have done but i didn't take enough time on the on the different materials didn't take enough references just at some point i just went straight for it yeah well, you can always um yeah i think that's like the first thing that i always do when i start a project is like you set up your your creature references which you've done which is awesome and then the next thing i would have done is like isolate the pieces like of mm -hmm. what body parts are which creature and then also the same with like the materials and and all this stuff is that you would do like a, a separate reference board for just material callouts and usually I do that before I start, just so that it like solves any sort of problems when I start sculpting. Because sometimes you might assume that something is a certain material, and then you start sculpting, and you're like, "Oh, this has been leather this whole time," or "Oh, it's been metal," and I just start sculpting it like it was fabric. Um, but yeah, but I mean, there's always a. Uh... Are are you planning to texture and do some sort of colors to this guy? Yeah, at some point I'd like to. Because, uh, well, uh, I also like it, but there is a lot more work to do, uh, a lot of refining and uh, making it better. Even on this little guy, I just, this is basically just a base mesh. I didn't do uh, anything uh, pushed on him. He's so cute. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> ripped, but also cute and weird. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, definitely. There's always a lot of work to do before you actually texture something. So, but I mean, I think like there's a moment where you like have to step back because you're like, I could always make, I could always be better, right? Yeah. But like, yeah, I usually give myself like a like a time limit and time period, and I'm like, okay, I'll get this finished okay. to this certain amount of time, 
And then at that point is when I'm going to move on because we're artists. We're going to keep perfecting. We're like, ah, that's not good enough. Like, you know, we're always going to be keep doing touch ups and refining yeah, until sure. the very last minute. And then you never get it done because you lose interest and you forget about it. And then it's just in the corner. Slits it to dude lines. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Usually I like, I set up like, um, oh, my. My calendar. Usually, like I'll I'll just like print out like a calendar, something like this, where it just has the days, and I'm just like I do a rough block out of like okay, I'm gonna spend like two weeks modeling, two weeks texturing, and like a week for look dev and a week for a week or two for grooming if that's my plan. So that's usually how I do it, and then like I give and take some time. So if I need to take like a couple of days more to model, then I'll take some from texture um, and vice versa. So it's just to help you keep on track because otherwise, if you don't give yourself some sort of schedule for especially personal projects, you're like doing it for the next year and <laughs> then you get lost in it. Um, yeah, that's not the plan. <laughs> no, we don't. That's not good. Um, yeah, sweet. No, this this side actually has a lot of cool details, especially like little veins and stuff. Like this is awesome. I feel like it was just this side of the face that felt. Oh, I see the thing here. That's it might be the lighting too, because it's literally the same side. If I the same the same thing, it's just mm, okay. symmetrical. So okay, uh, um, the 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 top is. lighting to make it uh, make it make the details stand out more. Mm -hmm. I think these wrinkles still needed to be a little bit more defined and maybe this stuff here. This stuff looks good though. Like I think it's just could be the lighting. This stuff looks good. Maybe more definition on these like little dots. Mm. But so far so good. Um And if you ever want to like um cuz I know you said it's symmetrical, but if you want to add asymmetry to the face before you pose it that's also cool too like you can use uh, layers and zbrush to do that um so you can keep it symmetrical for like almost the entire time and then activate a layer in zbrush erase some of the symmetry you've done and then do one side of the face asymmetrical um yeah. and then it's saved in the layer so you're not ever removing the symmetry completely um but I usually don't do that until like the very end of my project because symmetry is your friend. <laughs> yes, it is definitely. Yeah. And, uh, I tend to uh, to lose myself working with layers um, because just you you can't just bake one layer, and I I often make too too many of them, and then I forget what they make and just. Uh. I I completely understand. That's why I save it to the end. I either use layers for um, if I'm doing blend shapes or, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, um, if I'm like, well, let's, let's open up like something. Let's do that. So like layers, like, so let's say I've finished my sculpt and I'm like, okay, this is, this is perfect. This is exactly what I wanted as my final um symmetrical version like i would go up to like the point of of so much detail and you always want to make sure that like you're at the highest subdiv before you start working with layers and like you are at just the point of like you're basically like finished with the you know symmetrically and then you start adding layers and usually i only add about like four or five and i never bake them down because they're just so like at this point is where I would be like, okay, this is where I'm gonna add my asymmetry. And on this one is where I'm gonna just activate the whole thing, turn off my symmetry, and then like just move it around. So that like, you know, this eye is a little bit bigger, this side the face, I don't know, maybe it's got a swollen face, this ear is higher. Looks good. So that's my asymmetry. Like it's super subtle, but then if I wanted to make my adjustments again and I'm like, oh, the asymmetry doesn't look good, I can remove it and then I can just completely delete the layer. Or I can make a new layer, do another asymmetry pass. Like this is like the final, like I could even add another layer and say, okay, this is going to be my asymmetry details pass. 
and then this is where I'm gonna like sculpt in like maybe asymmetrical um, veins or wrinkles and stuff like that. Um, and then I would maybe do like three so that you don't get lost in it and you're not constantly using layers. Like I, I find layers is more like um, an end game kind of thing. It's not really while you're working on the asset. It's more like at the end when you want to make variations or poses or something like that. And that's kind of how you use them. All right. Yeah. This is cool. Let's see. I love this like see-through shield thing. It's really cool. It works kind of well. It but does. I think the the sleeve is just penetrating so much in it. I think that is uh, above the wrist. Uh, yeah, yes, I think just above the wrist here. It's just okay. inside the shield. Uh, I didn't realize it was too late. Uh, when, when I rendered it, I just was just like, ah, let's go with it. Let's roll with <laughs> I, it. Honestly, I don't even notice. It just kind of looks cool because it fades off, which I guess that makes sense. It's crashing through, but... <laughs> I think it just don't even notice. I just like the the fade because it feels like a kind of adds a lot of depth to this piece, which is cool. Mm -hmm. I like all the tiny details. It's awesome. Like even on the glove and stuff like this would be really cool. So what's your main goal? Are you trying to um, maybe do games or film or? Um, uh, actually, I. I, I... I just got my, my first job. I, I'm going to be a character modeler at Microsoft Animation in Montreal. Oh, nice. Well, you're like going to be right next door to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. You, you, you're you working at a frame store, right? Yeah, yeah. Frame store yeah. in Montreal. Yeah, that's great as well. God. That's but awesome. yeah, so, right. so, so yes, movies, animation, animated movies. Sweet. But, uh, and... I guess I'd like to try uh, VFX later, maybe creature modeling, stuff like that. But Definitely. It's a, uh, that is a very big niche to get into. So it's, you know, it's a difficult, uh, difficult path, but I'm sure like with this kind of work, you're well on your way, man. Like it's, it's not impossible. Yeah. I'd like to make this guy some demo material. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. with some other work. And I've got time, so <laughs> we'll is, see. Is this, is this stuff uh, sculpted on top? Or is yes. It... Okay. Cool. I think like these kinds of things, like the bolts and maybe this kind of stuff, I'm not sure what it is, and but we, it could probably be placed on top so that it's mm. easier to do like look dev on top. So like if it's a different if the idea like I mean I know you can't see it in the concept very much because um but if the idea is for it to be a different material altogether, like if the glove is leather and these pieces are metal, mm -hmm. um, you have an easier time if they're literally detached. So it's like a literal just like separate piece like you would have on like this glass, for example. Um, just because it's easy, it's way easier to make things uh rather than having to like mask it in texture and then paint in a different material and <laughs> like yeah, sure yeah yeah you literally can't see <laughs> it's just <picture. laughs> That's not many uh, not many details mm -hmm. no man i honestly like i don't have much to say because it looks pretty awesome I would just say like in terms of technicalities, because I know this was just for the sculpting section inside of uh, the rookies competition. So in terms of sculpting, like it's looking great. I would just say like focus on things that obviously you said you didn't have enough time for, but like the the feet, like just adding, like even if you add like, um, like striations to the nails and stuff, this is like tiny details that you can see in the reflections and stuff and in the dirt, like it collects ambient occlusion in the dirt and stuff. It's really cool to add some more like little wrinkles and stuff um, would be cool. And uh, if you get back to it, I think these are supposed to be metal. It looks like. like these uh, section of his leg. 
Is that metal? Which parts? This, like, this part of his leg? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's supposed to be metal, I think so. Or okay. maybe in a sort of... A... Yeah, I think, like... I it's think it's cool, metal. It's a cool approach you went with inside of ZBrush, but I would... Like it when if you're going forward with trying to like assign shaders and things to this, I would maybe think about bringing this into Maya and just separating these panels out and um, hard surface modeling these bits, just so that we can remove some of the softness that's sculpted into like the leg, you know, because this is gonna help yeah. to uh, bring more metal look to it. Because the less of this kind of this kind of stuff, you see the big dip we have. Yeah, it's still very really, organic. Yeah, it's still feeling like a bit organic in these like sections here, like where it's kind of dipping in and all that stuff. I would imagine like, because he looks like he's wearing like a metal boot, so it almost feels like it cut off here, and then this is like a sock. And that's what I kind of see. It's hard to say, but like this feels like this black thing feels like a sock. And then it's like a metal, I don't know, like... What would you, I don't know, like a, like a protector or something, armor uh, thing. So maybe that, maybe this is the sock part. Yeah, because it looks very close to the skin. So yeah, okay. I just. Um... This is the metal thing. Okay, this is the metal thing. This is the sock. Okay, okay, I lied. This looks good because it's a sock. We're good. <laughs> but um, I would just. Make sure that this feels like a little less mechanic then, because we don't want it to be mistaken for metal. So I guess when you assign like your surface shader and everything to this to make it feel softer, just make sure that feels like maybe stitching or I'm not sure. Um, just like a like one of those like indents into socks. You know that you know what I mean? Like the um the stretchy parts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The the elastic stuff. Exactly. Yeah, because that's gonna help bring some more realistic features to this and really convince us that it's a sock. Um, and again, uh, because I see it's attached here, maybe detach this. Yep. Because it's gonna. Well, it's just life. penetrating. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. But again, it's for the sculpt, so it's this is just tips on when you move forward with this. Um, and same with this metal thing. I don't know if it's. It doesn't look like it's connected, this part. No, it's not. It's a separate part. That's cool then. Um, also, if you're planning to, I don't know if he has, he probably doesn't have topology because it's just a sculpt, right? Um, yeah, no, not on the, not on the pants. Uh, it depends on what some of the straps or most of the straps are have decent topology. Uh, even the the body is almost no, it's not it's not it's not good topology but it has a low poly and just uh, as as you much but uh, yeah most of the parts have um, have subdivision levels. Okay, sweet. Um, only thing I was gonna say again because you said you wanted to move forward with it. This is nothing to do with the sculpt. The sculpt's great. Um, it's more like if you're moving forward with this, I would just make sure you put some topo in here that lines up with your seams so that your pants, um, whatever fabric you tile in here actually cuts off where it's supposed to cut off on the seam. Um, otherwise you'll have it cut off over here and that would be weird. Um, and the other thing maybe would be like these wrinkles here. Also don't feel quite right. These ones feel good. I think they shouldn't go the full length of his his mm -hmm. pants though. I feel like they should kind of they should both go this direction. Okay. Yeah, I feel like this just has it just feels a bit strange. These ones are good cuz it's pulling with the straps. Got lots of fat rolls. Love it. Yeah. 
honestly these notes are like so so picky like i'm 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 picking it apart because i don't have anything else to say yeah was, <laughs> I, I, i'll take it i'll take it we could have probably have some wrinkles coming from underneath here mm. um like i see that you've added some but we could probably make them a bit bigger because this is probably where the leather would like be creasing intensely because he's like putting his arms down all the time um especially like as it gets under here um yeah i don't know man it's great <laughs> well okay that's just yeah. that's already uh a lot to do i mean that's all i got that's it this like i got nothing <laughs> else <laughs> no it's looking cool. right um well, thank you very much no problem. I'm gonna send the screen recording to um to Alwyn, and then I think he's gonna put some sort of uh, rookie stuff on here, and then I think he's gonna send it back to you. So I will. Um, right. I'll let him do that. So yeah, do you have any other like questions, industry questions, anything um, that you wanna shoot at me before I let you go? Well. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to find some. Um, well, um, may I ask you how, how much? Uh, how much uh, do you think is a good salary as a junior in Montreal? Uh, beginning. Uh, it's that's tough to say. I feel like in Montreal the tax is higher here than it is in Vancouver. Um, and in Vancouver, let me just let me just check what mine was. I don't even know what that was. Yearly. When I first started, I was getting paid twenty two fifty per hour. So that's like forty six thousand a year. Um, okay about 45 maybe a year um and that was in vancouver i would probably say a little bit higher than that would be acceptable for montreal because of the taxes okay. um so probably like Like 50, like 40, 48, maybe 50 ish would be good for a junior. Okay. That's um, helpful. Yeah, but usually, like, um, studios also will have like a like a cap for junior. Yeah, I, uh, well. yeah, I guess they all have a grade for them. Yeah, they usually do, but at the same time, like, um, it's nice to know going into it, like, what what people should get like I would feel like starting in Canada in general as a junior anywhere between 20 to like 23 dollars an hour 24 dollars an hour is acceptable you know for a junior which would probably be like anywhere from 45 to I guess that's like 44 to 50 around there um would be reasonable um, I know that places like uh, MPC Academy and stuff like that, they get away with paying uh, juniors a lot less. Yeah. Um, just because they justify it as like training you to work straight into film. And yeah, I mean, you don't have to worry about that because you got the job at Micro, so that's good. But um, uh, yeah, any of the academies do justify paying less because of their like training program. So. It's unfortunate, but it's a reality. But it's a good way in, so. Yeah, it is. I know. I know some people who who've done that, and even though uh, it wasn't a great a great pay, they they learned a lot. So mm -hmm. they were yeah. they weren't unhappy with that. Yeah, I would say like staying for like the year, maybe a year and a half, if they extend mm. you, is yeah, that's right. is is good to do just for the experience and everything like that. But as soon as you can possibly get out. <laughs> I would probably do it because you get paid a lot more the minute you leave 
because that experience you learned in the film industry being there makes you 10 times more valuable the, the very next year um, because you know a lot more, right? Like, um, and then on top of that, like at uh, MPC or anywhere with the academies, like anywhere, like basically if you job hop, you'll end up increasing your salary 10 times faster than if you uh, stay at a company. Stay, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like most of the time, no one's going to give you more than like, I don't know, a dollar to raise uh, a year. So basically, the more you job hop, the better it is. But obviously, the more sketchy it gets when you <laughs> are uh, constantly switching. So it's good to keep that in mind. Yeah, I guess uh... <laughs> oh, I'll just figure it out in time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, yeah, anything else? Well, no, it's already a lot. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. No problem. Uh, if you have any other questions or you just need to know something or whatever, just message me on um, Instagram. And I'm, yeah. I think it's Crystal Models Things. I don't know if you follow me already, but if you don't, just follow me, send me a message. And uh, I usually answer people quickly on there versus if you message me on ArtStation or LinkedIn, it takes me a while. But um, yeah, anything, anything, honestly, if you think of anything you want to ask, I will. I'm an open book, so. Okay, well, great. Thank you. No problem. I, uh, I, I, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no problem. Have a good rest of your night um, and keep making awesome stuff. It's looking great. Yeah, thanks. Well, have a nice uh, end of the day, I guess.